Today, this Chicago landmark is home to a four-star luxury dog hotel. <laughs> Not a dog hotel. It's a regular hotel for people. <laughs> <laughs> no other city in the world could top the incredible collection of architecture found in Chicago. As the birthplace of the skyscraper for the past 137 years, the Windy City has been setting the standard for building design. What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to Chicago. Join me in this film as we go on not an architecture tour, but an architecture journey as we check out the 10 best buildings in Chicago skyline, past, present, and future. Not just playing, it's just gonna be the present. But go ahead and finesse that like button and let's check out number 10. Coming in at number 10 is the Aeon Center. Originally in 1973, it had a marble facade. Unfortunately, during construction, one of the slabs fell off, marking the only time it ever rained Italian marble in the Windy City. And y'all thought we had bad weather now. The facade was eventually redone, and the Aeon Center, formerly known as the Standard Oil Building, is currently the fourth tallest building in Chicago. It's supposedly getting a brand new observatory complete with glass elevator, but as of this filming, the project is on hold, and I couldn't find any news about it. So if you're involved with the project, let me know. At number nine, we have the Carbide and Carbon Building, the one that kind of looks like a champagne bottle. Yeah, that's actual gold that you see there at the top. It was designed by the Burnham Brothers, who came before the Mario Brothers, but didn't last nearly as long. Today, the Chicago landmark is home to Pendry, a four-star luxury dog-friendly hotel on historic Michigan Avenue. Eighth best building in Chicago skyline is NBC Tower, a very rare example of Neo Art Deco. If you look closely, you'll see that the building takes direct inspiration from nearby Tribune Tower, which we'll talk about later in the film. Spoiler alert. It was also inspired by Manhattan's 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Can you spot the similarities? With the way television is trending, I'm not so sure that famous Peacock logo will always grace the facade, but let's hope for the best. Out of all the buildings on my top 10 list, this one's the youngest. So I guess you could say when it comes to architecture, texture, I like a mold. So far we've talked a lot about architecture, but it's time for a coffee break. Double espresso from Dollar. Cheers. Next, let's take a look at IBM Plaza, AKA AMA Plaza. It was built for supercomputer giant IBM and had larger floors constructed to accommodate the servers and computing stations that once occupied the building. IBM Plaza was designed by the father of modern architecture, Mies van der Rohe, who has several other buildings around Chicago. If you're familiar with TD Center in Toronto or the Seagram Building in Manhattan, you'll notice the resemblance instantly. Today, IBM no longer calls it home. The Langham Hotel occupies floors two through 13, and although the Apple Store sits just up the River, it would have been kind of poetic had they put their store in this building. The Chicago Board of Trade building is at number six on our list. This Art Deco masterpiece forms the southern portion of the LaSalle Street Canyon. It doubled as Wayne Tower and Batman and has a statue of the Roman goddess Ceres all the way at the top. At ground level, you can find the legendary Chicago bar of the same name. Just down the street, we have the Rookery, which kicks off our top five. This Chicago school building is actually the city's oldest surviving skyscraper. Yes, 11 stories was considered a skyscraper all the way back in 1888. The Rookery was designed by Hall of Fame architects Burnham and Root, who also planned most of the 1893 World's Fair in their offices on the top floor. Just like Burnham and Root, I worked in this building for a couple of years, and let me tell you, I never took that lobby and light court for granted. Originally, it was designed by Root, but later redesigned by Frank Lloyd Wright. Just truly a beautiful design, and if you could only see one building in Chicago, I would recommend the Rookery. At number four, we have the Tribune Tower. This neo-Gothic design was the winner among several entries in an international architecture design contest held by the Chicago Tribune. It has stood for almost 100 years, but as of 2018, the newspaper giant no longer calls it home. It was converted into multi-million dollar condos, one of which will soon belong to yours truly. It stands at the north end of Pioneer Court, the home site of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, the first non-native settler of Chicago. One of the dopest features of this building is the fragments of historic structures from all around the world embedded in its facade. These were collected by correspondents for the trip.
before we get into the top three Chicago buildings, make sure you subscribe. At number three, we have the Wrigley Building, which is actually two towers connected by a bridge. This Spanish Renaissance Revival masterpiece was constructed for the chewing gum conglomerate and bears the same name as the Cubs baseball stadium on the north side. It was the first office building built north of the Chicago River, the first air-conditioned office building in the city, and one of the only office buildings in the world with Illuminati's. The second best building in Chicago skyline is actually my personal favorite, the John Hancock Center. It's home to 360 Chicago, the signature room on the 95th floor, and some pretty nasty chain restaurants at basement level. The X bracing and two spires on top complete its trademark look. Big John, as its nickname, was designed by Bruce Graham and Fazla Khan, who designed another building on my list. Do you know which one? This is a true symbol of Chicago, and a large portion of the building is dedicated to condos. Let me tell you, it definitely beats living in a van down by the river. So when I started filming this, it was sunny and kind of warm to be honest, but now it is cloudy and snowing. So it's kind of poetic, right? That I'm filming this top 10 Chicago buildings on a day like today, where we kind of run the full gamut of Chicago weather. Is it just me or does anyone else get really hungry when talking about architecture and the best buildings in a city? In any case, it's time for a lunch break. So let's stop at Urban Space, which is in one of the best buildings of Chicago. We are at Sushi San inside Urban Space. I think this is the first time I've ever had a sushi break during filming. So if you watched our River North Food Tour, you definitely definitely saw Sushi-san in the mix. It is definitely one of my favorite places to get sushi in the city. And I've always been interested since they opened here in the urban space on trying this little sister location. What's cool here is that even though it's a small kiosk inside a food court, they actually still make the sushi fresh to order. Tuna avocado maki roll made fresh to order. That is so good. It makes me very, very happy. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. What you talking about, Willis? The Sears Tower is the tallest building in Chicago, and for more than two decades, it was the tallest in the world. Once upon a time, it was the headquarters of Sears Roebuck and Company, but since they couldn't get a grasp of the whole internet thing, they had to vacate. The tower actually consists of nine separate tubes that combine like the nine members of Wu-Tang to form one of the city's biggest icons, architecture or otherwise. It is currently the third tallest building in the United States and home of Skydeck Chicago. Are there any buildings on your list that are not on my list? Let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you wanna see more architecture films just like this one. Peace and blessings. Uh -huh.